Greetings comrades, I am welcoming you back to Paul's Messy Bench Models. Sorry about that. Uh, I guess it's been a while since I've made a video, but I have a good excuse. I'm lazy. So, as you can see, I have built a tank. This is uh, Tamiya's new molding of the KV-1 Soviet tank from World War II. Um, Tamiya had an older KV-1 kit back in the 70s or 80s, but uh, this is a brand new kit. No, uh, no shared parts with the old kit. This kit builds up like uh, most modern Tamiya kits do. It's uh, very well fitting, very nice detail where it counts, but uh, relatively simple engineering, so it goes together fairly quickly. It's a really fun build. One thing that is uh, different about uh, the newer Tamiya kits compared to the older ones is the uh, track. It's not the uh, stretchy rubber band style track they were using back in the 70s. It's actually uh, what they call link and length track. So uh, it's not flexible but you do get a realistic sag in between the uh, return rollers and uh, you get nice molded in detail. It's, it's a little bit fiddly to build. Um, the long runs are all one piece, but as you go around the, uh, the drive sprocket and the uh, return roller here, there are individual links to glue together. But if you work carefully and just glue the links to each other and not the wheels. You just leave one spot um, unglued until the very end and that way you can kind of slide the whole thing off and paint all the parts separately and then put them back together and you get a nice realistic result. As you're putting this together um, there's a few things to watch out for. Um, I guess they're gonna come out with a later version at some other point so some of the details that are mounted on the outside, you need to drill holes from them from the inside. And uh, if you forget to do that after you've glued things together, then you won't know where your detail parts go. So it might be good to go through your instructions and kind of highlight the spots where you need to drill a hole from the inside. The kit comes with a nicely detailed commander figure. He's kind of fun to paint up. Um, one problem with the kit, though, is the interior surface of the hatches. You can pose all the hatches open if you want, but the interior surface is missing some details. It doesn't have the handle for pulling it shut or the handles for uh, cranking the locking bars into place. So you have to scratch build those on your own if you want to have a hatch open, which is kind of annoying. It doesn't seem like those would have been difficult parts to include, but oh well. These toolboxes on the back of the tank, you have, to me it gives you alternate parts so you can pose them with the, the lids open, but they don't give you anything to put inside the toolboxes. Um, I wound up scratch building some extra stuff to put on the outside of the tank. I scratch built a, uh, a shovel and uh, I found a, a pick from another kit. With this toolbox on the right side, I uh, decided to make it look like maybe they, they drove a little too close to a tree and ripped the lid off. And uh, I found some stuff in my spare part box and scratch built some little doodads and stuffed them in there just to have something interesting to look at. You can see Ivan's collected a German helmet as a trophy back in there. The grass on my diorama base um, comes from a German company called Hecke. They uh, basically market their stuff to model railroaders. So if there's a model railroad hobby shop in your town, you might be able to find some of this. I assume you could find it online too. But it, it basically it comes as a kind of a loosely bound together mat 
and you kind of stretch it out and uh, glue it down and uh, that way you get kind of a rough random texture to it. It looks pretty realistic. Um, the colors might be a little too uniform overall, but you can go back and airbrush uh, darker or lighter spots. You know, use a little tan color, kind of look at, make it look more mottled. For weeds, I just made some paper leaves and glued them around a little bit of stretch sprue. Put a little tuft at the end of the sprue to kind of look like a flower or a dandelion head. And uh, made kind of seed stalks for some of the grass out of old paintbrush hairs. With a little dab of painted white glue at the end to look like a seed pod. The base of the diorama is uh, Owens Corning pink rigid foam. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. 4x8 sheet might be 20 or 30 bucks depending on the thickness. And you can see I've uh, run a wire up through the bottom of it and up through the bottom of the tank to keep everything secure. This piece is built together from a couple of pieces of, of scrap. handy stuff to work with, but uh, it does make a lot of dust if you're cutting or sanding it. So be prepared for some cleanup work there. So on this build I had some fun trying out a painting technique I learned uh, from uh, another YouTuber. I think his name is pronounced Martin Kovach. I'll provide a link to his uh, video on chipping, but uh, it's kind of fun, and it's easier than it looks. So if you want to try it out, check out his video. An interesting thing you'll find on the painting instructions, um, apparently the Germans had 1 20th scale wooden models of enemy tanks, and on the painting instructions you'll find a uh, a little paper model that you can cut out and put together well you'll wind up with a 135th scale model of a 120th scale model tank well thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you have any uh, questions or comments just let me know below and I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can in the meantime till next time